Hello friends! Today we're going to continue our little uh, mini tokusatsu week with SD Shin Kamen Rider Rumble. Now this is probably the last video I'll do for this game because if I have the money uh, I would like to get the uh, Southeast Asian version, dump that, and then get it running on emulator. Now I'm going to assume that my save will, tra will transfer just with the just by putting the files in a different folder, <laughs> but I, I can't be too sure, and I've put probably a good 8 to 10 hours into this game already, so uh, just figured I'd do this for now, since I said I was going to do more Tokusatsu-themed stuff this week because of the Power Rangers special, which was very good, by the way. If you're, uh, if you're into Power Rangers and you have Netflix, definitely go check it out. Alright, so they added, uh... I'm a very uncultured weeb. I, I don't uh, know anything about this franchise, but... Uh, the robot from the game. So, uh... We're gonna play as it today. Got a bunch of upgrades here to grab first. There we go. Alright, so we're gonna go on the cyclone and play as whatever this robot's called. Uh, forgive me. <laughs> I don't know I don't know anything about that franchise at all. Now the DLC characters do seem to have pretty unique mechanics, but the movesets are still quite small. I was kind of hoping these characters would be more technical, but uh, I guess they want this to be accessible for kids, which on one hand is understandable, on the other hand, like, I think the, the Shin Kamen Rider movie that this is a tie-in for is, like, not for kids. <laughs> I think it's, I think it's PG-13 equivalent whatever the Japanese equivalent is for that, or something. It might actually even be the rated R equivalent. <laughs> so, they definitely could have added a little bit more sauce to the movesets, but it's uh, it's fun for what it is. Uh, I definitely endured much worse movie tie-in games when, uh, when I was a little one, so... <laughs> I appreciate it for that. Okay, so you can go to the Evangelion's uh, level up there, but I don't think I'm strong enough to do it yet. 
thing about this game is it's just like Memory of Heroes, which is the uh, previous Kamen Rider game that I've also been playing on the channel and my streams lately. Uh, bosses do not take any damage in this game until their, their super armor gauge is broken. So, damage is really important because it basically reduces how many cycles <laughs> you need to fight a boss for. The only games that have like a stun mechanic, usually you can just kind of damage them regardless, and the, the stun bar is basically just so that you can do combos and stuff. In this game, it's so you can do combos and damage. So damage is really important because it indirectly, actually directly makes things take less time. Bosses actually are not a pushover in this game. They do, uh, they do put up a fight. So <laughs> if you can reduce the amount of cycles you have to fight them, then uh, it's a definitely a good thing. Now, I noticed, I've noticed one thing that, uh, if this was actually a popular game, would be, uh, generating a lot of drama on this site, but it seems like the uh, DLC characters are, like, disc-locked, meaning that they're already in the game, because, uh, I paid for the season pass when I got, and I bought this, right? Uh, and there was, like, a day one patch. But then, I went on the Switch, like, a couple days ago, and it said that the DLC was ready. And there was no update to coincide with it, so I think they actually are selling disc locked content, <laughs> which is which is pretty shady. I mean, it's pretty it's a pretty cheap game, uh, not the worst it could be. It's still still pretty shady that they're doing that. I did not have to download any more data. Plus, I'm playing this on emulator, so that just kind of confirms it even more. sure why they went that route. I wonder if people in Japan are complaining about it. <laughs> Maybe don't they don't care as much as us Americans do, but definitely rubbed me the wrong way a little bit when I found that out.
Also, when a boss goes to half health, they'll go into a second phase, so... Ideally, you could probably want to finish in two cycles. Like, break their bar once, do half damage. Uh, break it a second time, and then do the other half, and then do your rider kick. Alright, I don't have any kind of connection to Evangelion, so we're gonna skip this. It's still illegal to skip Rider Kicks, though. <laughs> hey, got a can badge, nice. Only got a couple more of those left on the block. Alright, well, that's gonna do it for now. I don't know if I'm strong enough to actually finish the rest of the run, and also, uh,. I'm going to assume that this version is not going to get English support when the Southeast Asia version unlocks. It's probably going to be uh, a different version of the game. I don't know if I have money to get it right away, but uh, I'll probably get it on the first when my Patreon funds come in, because that, that like 50 bucks or whatever I get from that should cover it. So, <laughs> uh, in that case, that's probably the next time you'll see this game. If not, then uh, probably within the next few days, I would imagine. I might have some stuff to pay for on the first, but after that is done, we'll transition to the uh, English text version, because this game actually has a deceptive amount of reading with the items and stuff. Now, the game is skill-based, for the most part. It feels like you do need a lot of the stats just to beat the game in general, but uh, there is a lot of builds you can make with the items, so being able to read that easier is going to be a pretty big thing in the long run. So, uh, for tomorrow's Tokusatsu week, we're probably either going to do Battle for the Grid, or some commentated Memory of Heroes gameplay. Thanks for watching.